Oh, Butler's there. They nearly make contact. Butler has to try something as well besides himself with Tanner Wolf. Wow. Hey everybody, welcome back to today's video. Happy Friday to everyone watching this. Now congratulations, we have made it through another week. Today here on the YouTube channel though, we are gonna be doing a Flashback Friday video. If you guys stuck around for all the vlogs during quarantine, you guys know that in order to bring some content to the channel racing wise, we had to look back at some old footage of races at the Red Bluff Outlaws, the Cycleland Speedway, and other local tracks up here. And as I've said many times in my videos, I absolutely love to look back at old footage in any footage at all. That's why I put the GoPros on my race car and that's why we have for many, many years. So we can always look back at any race where we head to the track and see what happened in the A main event or a heat race or qualifying. And I think the reason I really like this is because it just helps relive the moment and you can almost just experience it again by watching that onboard footage or the footage of my mom in the stands with the shaky camera or something like that. But also one of the cool things about onboard cameras is you see a totally different perspective than what actually happened in the moment because in the moment things are heated, everything's happening really quick. And so when you can look back, you really see what actually took place. So I'm super thankful for guys like Fast Four Media that gives us a good chance to watch the races back here recently as they've been doing the Red Bluff Outlaws since about 2014. And then also back when I first started between 2009, 2011, my mom filmed a bunch of the races with the camcorder and we still have all of those on SD cards to go back and watch. So having all this footage from about the past 10 years makes for quite a few throwback and flashback Friday videos, which I would like to do a few times a month and do them throughout the summer. So today's flashback Friday video consists of the 2016-2017 season at the Red Bluff Outlaws, where we won eight races in the 250 division. And the main portion of the season that I really want to look at is where we won five races in a row from points race number five to points race number nine. This was arguably the most dominant point in my racing career at the Red Bluff Outlaws at the time. We were in the 250 division as our last year in the class, and if we wanted to win a championship and win a lot of races, it was go time. So before we get into the footage, we'll kind of start off with the story time getting into how the season started. It actually did not start off on a good note. At the time, and you know, as you many of you know, I still kind of am, I'm not a great qualifier at Red Bluff. It's something I've had to work on every single time I hit the racetrack. When the racetrack's hooked up there, for some reason, I just cannot lay down a lap. And for my final year in the 250 class, we knew it was key to try to get out front in points, so we needed to have a first good night out. And what ended up happening is first time we hit the racetrack for the new season, we went 17th quick. And 17th quick at the Red Bluff Outlaws will really hurt you. I missed the inversion in the heat race, so I was going to have to start behind all the fast guys, and then I had to work my way up into the top three in the heat race just to transfer. So I end up working my way up through the heat race. I transfer through that, but with how the qualifying really determines your starting spot in the A main event, I started in the back of the A main event worked my way up to the front, got in an incident, went to the back, and then worked my way up to the front again to finish third. And a lot of you guys are probably thinking third place, that's awesome, but for us at the time, qualifying 17th, we really needed to win that feature. So already starting off the season, we were like seventh to 10th in points. And this was also our third year in the 250 class. In the two previous seasons, we had won the first points race both years. You know, started off really confident, had great speed. And this year, to start off like this, we're like, oh no, this might be a rough season. We really got to get it together. So going into the second points race, we qualified in the dash. So that was a good start. But we still didn't have that great of an A main event. I believe we came home fifth or sixth. So we were doing all right. I believe we moved up a spot or two in points, but we're still 25 to 30 points out of the lead, which I know doesn't seem like a lot, but at Red Bluff, you need to get every single point you can during the season, whether it's the first points race or the last points race. And at the time, this is where we kicked it into high gear. We had a really good team starting points race number three all the way to the end of the season and ended up winning the championship. So going into points race number three now, this is really where we decided to kick it into high gear. We qualified good and made the dash, got through the heat race, did good in the dash and got points there. Remember at Red Bluff, it's so key to get those dash points and qualify in the top six. And then we ended up winning the A main event from a few rows back. And we were absolutely pumped. It felt good to get our first win of the season and now we knew we just needed to be a little bit more consistent and we should have a good chance at the championship. Remember, at the time, I wasn't driving for factory QRC in the 250 division. I was driving for my dad. He owned the race car. Between him crew chiefing on it and then also a good friend of ours, Rick Rapp, they absolutely put the super tune on it. And like I said, after points race number three, this is where we got unbelievably quick. 
So now points race number four rolls around. We had a consistent night. I believe we finished third in the A main event. Solid podium, but I mean, we're really disappointed unless we just win the race. But now we roll into points race number five, and this is where our streak starts. So I'm not really sure what changed between those first four races of the season. We were kind of consistent. We picked up a win, but we were still working on qualifying. We were losing points, gaining points here and there. And then the next five races where everything fell into place and it seemed like everything went my way. We had a good consistent night for points race number five, and we just carried that momentum into the next three races leading up to the break at the end of the season. If you guys are unfamiliar with the Red Bluff Outlaws schedule, we run the first six or seven races of the season, and then we have a break. That break lasts between the end of December all the way to the beginning of February, so we run no races down there in January. So we won points races number five, six, seven, and eight. We had all this momentum, then the break happened, and coming back from the break at Red Bluff, yes, if you had speed before, that's awesome, but having that much time off so much changes and when people are going and running other places just things happen so coming back to points race number nine it was almost like a reset button before we finished the season so to go along with the story of us winning five races in a row at the Red Bluff Outlaws, I obviously got to play some of the footage and the exciting battles that took place on those nights. All of this footage is courtesy of Fast Four Media. If you guys would like to check them out, their link is always in the description below. Kyler Shaw, who owns the company, me and him are great friends and he does so much for the Outlaw Cart community. So if you can go over there and purchase some of his streams or purchase a platinum account, $30 a month, you get all of his content. It is absolutely worth it. And if you want to stay tuned with what I'm doing, that is one of the best ways to do it. Anyway, here's the footage from our five A main event wins at the Red Bluff Outlaws, obviously starting with points race number five and ending with points race number nine. Oh, yellow is going to come out. White is out right now, but the yellow at the same time, one car parked right in the middle of the racetrack. Everyone goes to the bottom. Your winner is Tanner Holmes, Blake Carrick second, and Daniel Whitley third. So somebody losing their receiver. Lights are out though. We are set to go back to green off a of turn number four. Green flag in the air. What a restart for Caden Butler. He took the lead. Now Holmes gets into Butler. Wow, we got some action at the front of the field with just four to go. Yeah, Butler is not done yet. He has not made any friends this race. I don't think he cares. He's trying to pick up his first feature win. Has put enough of a cushion between himself and second place that he should be okay. Oh, yellow is out with the white flag coming out this time by. We're gonna see the checkered come out as well as they come off a of turn four. Tanner Holmes with yet another feature win. Caden Butler second, Tanner Pennant. Lights are out, set to go back to green. Colby Fox leads the field off a of turn number four. Great restart though for Tanner Pettit on the outside of the racetrack. He's gonna come off the top, top turn number two and possibly take the lead here this time off of four. Fox slides up, but Pettit, he doesn't budge. They're side by side in the turns one and two. Yeah, Tanner Pettit led that lap. He's staying on the outside of the racetrack. Great racing up front between your top two. And this racetrack absolutely prime right now as both lines absolutely equal right now. Finally, Colby Fox pulls ahead of Tanner Pettit. Pettit nearly got into the back bumper of Fox as Fox went to the bottom. Now here comes Tanner Holmes, three wide entering turn number three for the race lead. Tanner Pettit was so close to a win last weekend and now he's trying to change those results from last week and pick up a win. but. The two-time main event winner so far this season, Tanner Holmes now moves into the second spot. Yeah, Holmes looking really strong, rolling around the bottom of the racetrack. He looks to the inside of Fox off a of turn four, picks up the front wheels. Wow, neck and neck at the line that time by. Tanner Holmes said, hey, the bottom's down here, buddy, and went right by the 18C at Colby Fox. And now Fox in danger of losing the second spot. Yeah, Tanner Holmes, once he gets up front, is the class of the field each and every week. White flag in the air for the driver of the 18T, Tanner Holmes. Leading the points and looking for maximum points in the feature, Tanner Holmes, fourth main event win of the year. Able to keep pace just a bit. White flag in the air. Yeah, Tanner Holmes. He's been the absolute class of the field the last few weeks and off of turn number four, he'll pick up another win. Double checkers for Tanner Holmes. Oh, we're wrecking big off turn four. First three rows. Rothman looking for a much better start than the last one that she does. She clears Pettit on the restart. Pettit with a big move to the inside. He'll slide by and take the lead. Tanner Pettit now on front. Rothman coming back to the inside. She'll return the favor, take the lead. But now here comes Tanner Holmes. Tanner Holmes goes by both of them and turns one and two. Unbelievable. What a drive by Tanner Holmes. Tanner Holmes absolutely putting it on him right there. 
Jacob, the school's showing them how it's done. Holmes on the top side, Keenan Butler trying to make the bottom work. He'll see two to go this time by. Butler is there. He, Holmes had to have seen him down there in turns one and two. He stays it around the top side. White flag for Tanner Holmes. Looking for four in a row. Butler's there. They nearly make contact. Butler has to try something as Holmes well sides himself with Tanner Holmes. Wow. Fantastic move by Tanner Holmes in that final corner. Or else he probably would have saw himself getting slid by Caden Butler. A fantastic race in the 250 intermediate division. Another great win by Tanner Holmes. That is four in a row, six on the season. So what were your guys' thoughts of that? Hopefully you enjoyed my paint scheme on the race car. I know that was one of my favorites, that blue. It was actually inspired by the NOS car that Kyle Busch ran in the Xfinity series. We just kind of changed up the colors a little bit. But I absolutely love that race car and I had so much fun that season. Like I said, it just seemed like we really couldn't do anything wrong. The only thing we were doing wrong was qualifying bad and that was setting us up to have a tougher night. But then we had so much speed in the A main event and the heat races, it seemed like we were able just to drive through the field. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you guys leave a like, subscribe, and share. I tried to pre-shoot this video so you have something to watch on Friday as we will be racing Skagit Thursday, then traveling home, probably get home around 3 or 4 o'clock on Friday. But like I said, that's it for today's video. If there's anything last that you guys want to do, head down to the comment section down below and let me know what track you guys will be at this weekend. That's super fun to see where you guys are all from and where you're going to be competing at. See you guys all in the next video. Deuces.